Hello guys, welcome back. Jordan here from Artisan Electrics. I want to talk to you today about something that's close to my heart because we are doing a lot of EICRs at the moment as you probably are and we're finding something interesting which is that we're getting landlords coming to us now with the quotes or with the EICRs from other electricians and asking us to quote for the remedial works. So the question is, how do you quote for the remedial work on an EICR that somebody else has done? This is where it gets challenging because if the previous electrician did a fantastic job of the EICR and did very thorough descriptions in their list of observations along with pictures of the various non-compliances with the regulations, then it would make your life fairly easy as another electrician coming along to quote for the work. But what we're finding in these EICRs that are being sent to us from other electricians is quite disheartening. I'll give you an example. We had one come through to us a few days ago. Custom wants us to quote for rectifying the C2 and the C3 items on the EICR. And the descriptions were as follows. Box not IP rated. Box fire rated. Both C3. No RCD. C2. Light not IP rated. C2. Cable exposed and socket damaged. C2. No description of where these items are. The box that I assume he's referring to is the consumer unit, but the fact that they're calling it a box is a little bit worrying to me because I've never heard a competent electrician call it a box before. It's either a consumer unit or a fuse box, but really you would say consumer unit unless you're uh, explaining it to the customer in layman's terms, but just box, a little bit worrying. So now I scroll down through this EICR and I'll just have a look at some of the readings. And for RCD operating time on every circuit, they've put zero milliseconds. Then next to the RCD tick box, you've got NA. So obviously there was no RCD protection, but for some reason they put zero milliseconds uh, for the RCD operating time. They have recorded ZS readings. They've recorded R2 readings and then an R1 and R2 reading on one circuit, which is the ring circuit. All the insulation resistant readings are down as greater than 299 mega ohms, live to life and live to earth, which I always question that. If somebody is testing every circuit life to neutral and getting 299, I question whether they've done the test or whether they're just making it up, because usually in most situations where you're doing a lift in EICR, you have to put a limitation on life to neutral uh, installation tests because you're never going to be able to get around and unplug every single item of equipment or disconnect fixed equipment, remove light bulbs, all that kind of stuff. It's just impossible. So I would say that they're making those readings up. If it was me, I'd put a limitation on them. Number of points. This is interesting. Socket ring, 10 plus. Number of points, lights. 8 plus. Weird. Um, I've never really seen it done that way before. Um, and then the uh, the protective devices are described as BS88-3 type C. Again, I would question that. And they've put a KA rating of 6 amps on them. So basically this seems to be one of those cartridge fuse boards. No RCD protection for any circuits. So why have they not put anything about specifics when it comes to no RCD protection for socket outlets, which can be used outdoors? No RCD protection for cables buried less than 50 mil in walls. No RCD protection for luminaires in the domestic premises. No RCD protection for lights in a location containing a shower or bath. No, all they've put is no RCD. Very, very minimalist description, to say the least. And this kind of just annoys me, because now I've got to look at this and try to quote for the remedial works. So I'm saying, right, box not IP rated, box not fire rated. I'm looking at the board and I'm figuring out, okay, it's probably a wooden Wilex 
fuse board, but they've not mentioned that, they've just said it's not fire rated. So I would say it needs a new consumer unit. So I'll quote for replacing that with a new modern 18th edition consumer unit with an SPD and RCBOs. No RCD, okay, that is covered by putting a new consumer unit as well. Light, not IP rated. Now it doesn't say where, but I'm guessing that it's probably a bathroom light. So I will quote as a guess for replacing the bathroom light with a new IP rated LED fitting. And then cable exposed and socket damaged. Very, very hard to know what to quote for that. But again, I would guess that it's probably just a broken socket outlet somewhere. Maybe it's a surface mounted one, so I'll quote for a new surface patris and a new double socket and a bit of time to sort out the cable that's exposed. So overall, this is probably a day's work and we're gonna to have to test things out again because I don't really trust the person's readings that they've taken. But it's very difficult to quote off someone who's done an EICR like that. And the reason I'm making this video is because a lot of people have messaged me saying similar things. By the way, follow us on Instagram if you're over there because there's a lot of conversation going on over there and we do share stuff on Instagram that we don't share here on YouTube. But um, we get messages on Instagram like saying exactly the same, that people are getting these EICR sent to them that are so vague they have no way of really quoting for the remedial work properly. So then they end up having to go out there, have a look around and potentially have to do another EICR themselves just to figure out what's going on so that they can quote for the remedial work, which is crazy. Now, I have a guess of why these EICRs are so minimalist. And I think that it's probably because the electrician who did it doesn't want anyone else to win the remedial work. They want to make it so vague so that nobody else can easily quote for it and therefore they are more likely to get the remedial work from this EICR, which probably took them a very small amount of time to do and they didn't charge very much for. So the only way that they can regain the losses that they've made on doing this EICR is to get a load of remedial work out of it in the end. Now, I'm not saying that everyone's like that who's doing a cheap EICR. I know some excellent electricians who do EICRs for very reasonable prices and they do a very thorough job. But when I see this kind of shoddy paperwork with very minimalist descriptions, I have no other choice but to come to the conclusion that whoever did this was not really doing a very good job. Um, I mean, I could go through and show you the paperwork. It looks pretty rubbish, to be honest. The way it's laid out and everything is just on the basic NIC, EIC template. And there are a lot of things missing. Um, in the limitations, for example, he's just put one word, furnitures. That's it. Limitations, furnitures. Okay. Um, details of the installation covered by this report, 75% of wiring and fixing. So yeah, the report doesn't even cover 100% of the installation. It only covers 75%, but he's not actually told us which 75% he has inspected and tested. Um, you know, just briefly glancing at this, there are a lot of weird little things that you just think, hmm, um, yeah, this person didn't really know what they were doing. And yet they're out there doing EICRs for a large estate agents based in Cambridge. So, you know, this is slightly disheartening to me and I'd love to know all your thoughts in the comments. Purpose of the report, there's another classic example, the purpose of the report is condition of wiring and fixing. Okay, didn't know that that was one of the um, prescribed purposes for an EICR. I mean, okay, you're checking the condition of the wiring, but couldn't he go into a bit more detail like it's for a letting agent, so it's for a tenancy agreement? Um, so whoever's done this has not really been trained properly. I think that's what it comes down to. They're just doing these reports and they're probably doing hundreds of them because I actually know one of the electricians who used to work for this agency. And I can tell you that he was being pressured that he had to do three EICRs a day. He was subcontracting for another company who were contracting for this particular agency and he told me that he was fed up and he was not going to work for them anymore because he was being pressured to do three EICRs a day and he just couldn't do it in good conscience. 
because he didn't feel that he could really do them properly. So obviously they've got this guy in to do them instead and uh, yeah, the results are shocking unfortunately. But this is the battle that we have in this industry at the moment. There is a lot of shoddy working practices happening and people are getting away with stuff that they just shouldn't be getting away with it. And unfortunately 95% of consumers just don't know the difference because they're not educated to know the difference. So <clears throat> as I said in my previous video about the um, EICR price war, I would say that it, it's our role as electricians to make ourselves stand out from the competition and how you do that is up to you but there are ways and there one of the ways is just spend a bit of time with customers on the phone explaining what you will provide in terms of an EICR and hopefully that will make them question anyone else who comes to them and says that they can do it for a third of the price and it will only take an hour because maybe alarm bells will start ringing if they know that you were supposed to be doing it and it would have taken half a day. Maybe they'll start to question why. Maybe then they'll start to do some research. Maybe they'll find one of my videos where I have a little rant, rant about it and hopefully slowly we can educate the customers. It's just a shame that organisations like the NIC, EIC and other approved bodies who are supposed to be kind of policing this industry in a way are not doing anything to educate customers as far as I'm aware. That is a real shame because it's kind of their job to do that and we're paying them to do that to a certain extent and yet nothing like that is happening. So anyway that's my little rant over with. I would love to know all your thoughts in the comments. If you have enjoyed my little rant hit a thumbs up. It does help the channel to grow and if you haven't subscribed already why not? The Artisan channel is the best one out there when it comes to electrician's life. So get in, subscribe, join the Artisan movement and we'll see you on the next one. Thank you for watching and have a great day.